So I think that this is all you need in order to rope swing, assuming you already have a high line up. Would you like to see us break test a real as we can life scenario on this episode of Slack Snap 3.0? Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to a random park where we are not vandalizing anything in order to do a real life brake test. So I feel like we can simplify rope swings in order to highline and convert them over to rope swings when we want. Because right now we have to basically put a rigging plate in the middle of our high lines preventing us from highlining. And if you don't, you have to add a rope to stabilize and it actually moves the ring a lot when you jump because a rope stretches and it wasn't the best part of my design when I rope swinged. But to eliminate a rigging plate is with our Enov split segmented high lines now, which I uh, use for all my high lines. All of my webbing is now 50 meter pieces. I have two kilometers of webbing and uh, I feel like that system is very versatile. It's safer than having big continuous lines that could fail and drop you pretty far. But we want to connect the ring, steel rings, which you rope swing off of, uh, in order to jump at the Enov split because every 50 meters you have a spot. So we're gonna put the ring at whatever Enov split we want, stabilize it with these two guys. We pad the Enov split so the ring's not setting directly on the Dyneema. Um, it's the only time I think I've ever padded my Dyneema. And uh, <laughs> so we're, we're good at slack lighting, we promise. So let me show you what I've got set up here before I cover it up and then I'll show you how I set this up. So come here. Okay, Lorenzo. Howdy. Let's put the ring on here. What we have is the Eno split. This is loose. This main shackle is in a figure eight. This is five millimeter soft shackles. The heads are 25% smaller, and I put them in the loop here and in the loop here. Now, when I do this in real, real life, I tape the throat in case this jiggles, but I've never had a problem before, but I didn't feel it's necessary here. You can see this is the concern for most people that it is pinching right here, and it loses some strength of the webbing when it does that, but so do quick links. And what we do, is yeah. we put the ring basically on top of that and then stabilize it with these other soft shackles. So, Lorenzo, can you Velcro this for us? We have shorter pieces and two of them. And we put that there. The idea is you don't want it to cover up your um, uh, sewn loops. Got it. So, uh, now we need to put the ring on the Velcro. Usually you don't have a 30 pound dynamometer when you're doing this. You just slide it over. You will use personal anchors in order to clip in here and slide over. And then you would take your leash off and attach your climbing ropes. This is our climbing rope system we'll explain in a minute. Um, but we need to stabilize this so it doesn't come off of our system. So what you do is you take a short uh, five millimeter, a four inch one and a, uh, I think, six inch one. These are the ones I use here. A long and a short is the uh, bottom one. And those two sizes work perfectly for what I have here. So uh, try to get, try your darnest to get that in there. Now this is something I did at the Taft 170 line and I did it on a real high line and it was difficult. It was only like a 30 foot jump, but it does work. You just have to work it in there. So then you put it around the ring Yep, you can definitely cheat and do that. There you go. Hold on, is it flattish? There we go. Okay. Tighten up old Betsy. Close the throat. There we go. Okay, now pull the ring that way. Perfect. And now you can stick it on, because of course the, the button is right here. My rings slide over this system very nicely, especially when this is taped on both sides. Um, and now what you do, here's the magic of this system. This Matt Stoling showed me this. You put this through here and through here. 
Usually you don't have a big old dyno on here. There you go. Okay, but you gotta go through that. There you go. And by crisscrossing those, it keeps the ring from twisting. And that is where the magic comes from. You can barely get that head over. You can actually turn it, Lorenzo, if you want. Okay. Yep. Keep turning. Would you guys like to see rope on rope abrasion? All right, that's good. And now you can massage that to be proper. Okay, so how much play do we have in this now? What, uh, what we do is we tape this Velcro in a real life situation, which I suppose we could do before we actually break test. Move it back and forth, Lorenzo. So it only moves about an inch. If you use Dura La Vida loops or other systems that have the loops, the secondary loops back here that you attach the backup to, they're actually quite large and this system wouldn't work necessarily. But what you could do is you could probably stabilize it just like this on the main right here, even though this backup section would technically be over here. So this system can work for almost any segmented highline. Um, but that is our rope swing technology. Let me show you the brake test setup now. So the way this is set up is we have a dynamometer on our main line. And the reason we couldn't use the Rock Exotica one that I have is because this shit breaks higher than that Rock Exotica reads. Does that make you feel better? Anyways, so we have 1.2 kilonewtons on our main line right now. Lorenzo, can you get on that real quick? If Lorenzo gets on our super short little line here, we're at 2.9 kilonewtons. So that's roughly what it would be if we were highlining. Close enough. Um, can you pull the white rope and I'll explain what we got here. This is loose, our backup is loose, which will, I imagine, would start to capture some of the stretch when we pull it. Um, what he has here is, what we have here is the dynamometer attached to the ring so we know at what point this breaks at so we know whether or not it's stronger than the rope. I have a feeling this whole system is stronger than the, uh, like a 10, 10.5 millimeter dynamic rope that we would even jump on, which is awesome to build a system where this is stronger than this, than this, than this, and this, and this, and this is the weakest part. That is ideal. It's like building a pyramid. So instead of a jump rope, we have this big old dynamometer, which we tried to make a catch system for with our janky setup and it's not going to work so we're going to tree pro the out of it in order for it to not get broken and hopefully it keeps the peak force when it slams into the ground anyways um what we have there on that tree is a i think half inch am steel this is just like slack snap 1.0 our first 200 brake tests on slack snap had a two to one going to other two to ones up to a pulley which was pulled by my van now, Lorenzo has a bigger truck and we're gonna use that. So, we uh, did not put a bolt in that concrete over there by that fence, which we mysteriously connected our static side of our pulleys, because this is our dynamic side of our pulleys, the side that moves. So, he's going to pull the rope with his van through that fence, so nothing comes flying at his truck. Um, it worked out that way, because we couldn't find the perfect three or four trees that we needed anywhere else. So we're gonna pull, 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 and hopefully shit goes flying, because that makes this way more fun. Woo! Woo! Keep going, Lorenzo. This is gonna work. Keep going. The backup is not engaged yet. The backup on one side is engaged. The second backup is engaged. I'm gonna move. <laughs> Keep going. Everything's engaged right now. You still got room to play. Pull like a mother. Pull, pull, pull. Pull, you pussy. Pull! Oh, are you stop pulling because we want to read the dinos? Done? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the backup has engaged. Um, the backup's still engaged. The backup's engaged. It's probably freaking high right now. Wait, what happened? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Well, that's why we uh, pad it. It broke the broke main. Yeah, so let me evaluate this. So it broke, it broke here. So that makes me feel really good about um, 
about this not compromising the soft shackles and it did not break the loop. I just want everybody, including Rad, to know that my loop didn't break and that we got full value out of the stitch. Just saying, just saying. And out of that stitching pattern. At 23.42 kilonewtons is what we got out of this system. 23, um, don't tandem rope swing. Careful not to push buttons. And 22.85 kilonewtons on this. Ropes basically break at this level. So even if we got our high line stronger, there's no point if the rope's gonna break. Now the question is, do we want to continue pulling and push the push that there? That's the backup? Yeah, because technically the backup's still engaged. Um, you can see the condition of that right there. This is where it broke on the last piece here. Um, this is pulling funky on that just because, right, this broke. And so there's nothing keeping the ring from going this way other than you can see all that. All right. Um, this has very little tension on it. Give me the countdown when you want me to go. Pull. Pulling. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. so, so the dyno, yep, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, that was so cool. Oh my God, and oh, my camera fell. Oh, yes, for science. Um, okay, so we got that GoPro, we got our slow motion. That did not get any reading because, well, that was on the main. Did we get any more strength? Oh, fuck yeah, we got 30 before our whole high line failed. Yeah, another trick you can do is actually tighten the backup a little so the backup of the main actually work in unison in order to increase the strength. But we had ours extra loose because we wanted them to pull individually. Um, oh, wait, this isn't science until we do it um, more than once, right? Oh, that's right. I bought lots of webbing to test. Do it again. What's it look like, Brandon? Ooh, ooh, one more time, one more time. Oh, 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 that was cool. Okay, food for thought, we just realized. This is still attached to one side. So if you're okay with supermanning and rope swinging a second time, you can do that. It broke the same side for main and backup, and it broke in the same place at the bottom of the stitch here. So we got full value that we could possibly get out of these loops. So let's open that up. Our soft shackles are perfectly fine because it's not even um, at a fraction of you know, what they break at. So we're gonna reuse these and uh, set this up again because I have four more pieces of uh, these that I just bought brand new from Bounds Community. So uh, let's do this experiment one more time and see what we can get with the, oh, oh, oh my poor camera. And we'll see what we can get with um, the back, we can make the backup we can make the back up a little bit tighter. Yeah. And that way we can see uh, if we can get an increased strength. If we intentionally know that we're going to be rope swinging on a specific segment. How did it feel for you? Was it as good for you as it was good for us? Uh, it was a pretty good release. Is it a good release? Okay. We're all set up again. We have our soft shekels on this ring. <laughs> And it doesn't move more than uh, two, two inches approximately. Main, main. Backups a little tighter than they used to be. You can see here how there's very little there. And ideally this would capture some of the, the weight. So um, we're gonna set this back to zero. Our peak force so far when we were pulling it was basically two kilonewtons. And yep, this whole system is pointless, but we have it. Um, so, are you ready, Lorenzo? Ready, steady. Break test number two. On your mark. Pull and just stop when the first one breaks. Stop. 
Stop. Stop. Stop. I want to check something. Peak hold. Okay. Just leave it. Sorry for the delay, folks. That is at six kilonewtons and peak hold is on. So you can continue. Literally. What a, what a beautiful setup. If I say so myself, what a clever experiment design. Look at those trees. Look how they creak. Ho, oh, stop, stop. Stop, stop. Um, so this side broke. You can see here, looks like that. What's that reading? 25. Ooh, yay, we got more. Come on, focus, focus, I want proof. 25.32 kilonewtons. Um, 30, 30.6, interesting. 30.6, okay, I'll buy that. Go for it. Break the, uh, break the back up. Wow, that was so cool. And the dyno didn't hit the ground. Actually that, oh, this shit's working. Oh my God, I think this is holding it up. What's that one, Reed? Twenty-five point three two. 25.32. 25 and 30.6. And so we didn't get a higher force, but uh, it definitely took a lot more pulling to break it. Same with this side, it looks like. 25.32 and a fun fact is you're still attached to the ring. So you just Tarzan into the cliff. You get two rope swings for the price of one death. After our tests here, I approve of the idea I pulled out of my ass the other day. <laughs> okay, careful. Tree Pro could be flying at you at any moment. Uh, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Uh, rope swings are safe. Um, therefore, you shouldn't highline or something like that. So, uh, <laughs> so you can put a ring on the Enov split soft shackles, pad them with Velcro, stabilize them, and your, at least your Feather Pro will break at the stitching. You get full value out of your Feather Pro. And if you are getting those kinds of forces, 30, 23, 30 kilonewtons, you are too heavy and you shouldn't rope swing. Now, please keep in mind that tandem rope swings can literally double, if not more, your rope swing forces. And when we have rope swinged in the past, we've gotten six kilonewtons at the most on the jumper, on, on a single rope, uh, and the anchor had approximately six kilonewtons. So those are safe numbers, but if you add a second person and do tandems, um, that's literally twice the force. So please be careful and don't ever do tandems if you, if you listen to this at all. But uh, six kilonewtons with a 23, 24, 30 kilonewton uh, system here is super good enough. However, there are 20 ways to screw this up. Therefore, you shouldn't rope swing. <laughs>